Hey gang, Tim here from Core Electronics, and today we're expanding our knowledge of loops and iteration in the powerhouse programming language of Python. Loops are wonderfully helpful, allowing the flow of code to become circular and iteration to transpire. Without them, it would often take lines and lines of code to enact similar results. And because of this, they are among the most basic, yet almost the most powerful features within programming. Utilized by all modern programming languages, loops effectively instruct a computer to repeat a process until a specified condition is reached. This specified condition can be thought of as a question to the computer. The same question is asked again and again and again until the criteria are fulfilled and no further looping actions are necessary. Each time this question is asked, this is called an iteration. There are two distinct types of loops in Python, for statements and while statements. It is worth noting both loops can be used interchangeably for any situation. They just require altered syntax or approaching the programming conundrum in a different way. For loops. In Python, they are started by using the for keyword. This is a looping structure that runs a sequence of statements multiple times for a preset number of times. The sequence of statements that are repeated is often referred to as the loop body or the looping body. This means this is an explicitly bounded iteration method. Once the fixed number of loops are completed, the code will move on to the next stage. Typically, for loops will run through each element in a list using the index number as the iteration method. Now, while loops. In Python, they are started by using the while keyword. This is a looping structure that is repeated if a conditional expression is still held true. It will test this each time before executing the loop body. Conditional expressions are features of a programming language that perform different actions depending on whether a specified Boolean condition evaluates to true or false. While loops is used in situations where we do not know how many times the loop needs to be executed beforehand. Often this leads to unbounded iteration, which means it will continue to loop until that condition is met. Loops usually have a definite iteration amount. This means the number of repetitions is specified explicitly in advance. The opposite of this is infinite loops. This is code that will essentially repeat forever. This is because the code either has no terminating condition or exit condition is never ever met. Or even perhaps the loop is instructed just to start over from the beginning again and again. It is also worth noting any type of loop can be put inside any other type of loop any amount of times. This is referred to as loop nesting or a nested loop. Let's now demonstrate these keywords inside some Python scripts and accompany them with control structure flowcharts. Control structure flowcharts represent program execution flow in a visual way. Simply, program flow is a general term which describes the order in which your lines of code are evaluated by the computing device. Jumping into the computer, we can now see a script inside the Python programming window which uses a for statement to utilize and initialize a looping structure. This script effectively adds up all the values inside a list variable and then prints the total. It uses the keyword in to allow each element to be looked at within A, the variable A, and this results in an iteration as soon as this for loop is executed. The result of this script can be seen in the Python idle shell, which is below, which gives a result of 98. Now the syntax worth noting, when you finish the line which initializes the loop, you must end the statement with a colon. Furthermore, all parts of the script that are part of the looping body must have indentation. This is achieved either by entering four spaces with a spacebar key or a single press of the tab key, both found on your keyboard. Now on the table with me is a control structure flowchart representing this script. The flowchart demonstrates exactly the path of execution that the computing device can do when the script is run. Now, you can see that this loops around after the two variables are created, around and around and around, until every single element has been looked at and every single element has been added. Once this iteration is complete, it's able to finish and come out to the print total. Moving on. Here in the computer land is an example of a while loop structure, which has been written in the Python programming window. This script adds up all the values inside a list variable. It uses the keyword len, which is shorthand for length, to figure out how many iterations should occur. So now if I run this code, 
you'll see we get the same result as before. So len, this keyword, when used in this context where it's given the identifier of a list variable, gives back an integer value for how many elements are inside the list. Brought to the table is the control structure flowchart for this script. You can see it runs through in a similar process as the for loop previous. However, some extra complexity is required. Also, check out here the use of the plus equals. The plus equals is the same as total equals total plus a element. The value of element is also increased by one for each iteration using a similar assignment operator method. Similar syntax rules as before. You got to have everything indentated and you got to finish the loop with a colon. One, two, three variables are defined at the beginning. The loop begins. The iteration occurs many times. Once iteration is complete, the full list will have been gone through and added together and the total will be printed out. Now this is where it gets interesting. Python, the programming language, allows you to use loops inside other loops. This is referred to as nested looping. The nested loop can be a different keyword type to the outside loop, or the same types can be used and it will still run perfectly fine. Swinging into the computer, we can see a script that has been written in the Python programming window where a while loop has been nested inside another while loop. The result of this script can be seen when I run the code below in the Python idle shell. So this script counts down two variable values and then prints a nice looking pyramidical result. Loops within loops open up new dimensions of possibilities and this example demonstrates this. But how exactly is it doing it? So as soon as you get into loops into loops, the advantage of using control structure flowcharts really shine. So checking out the flowchart that I have brought to the table, let's go through the same iteration cycles that's occurring on the screen. So starting off, we have the one variable created A. Now while A is greater than zero, which in case it is, B equals 10. So while B is greater than A, so B is 10, A is 10, so B is not greater than A. So straight away, we break out of this, we take one from A, we print B and A. Going to the screen, you can see this is exactly what happens, 10 and nine. And now we cycle all the way back around and we come back to the very first one. Now, A is still greater than zero, A is nine currently. We go back down, B is reset, the value of B is 10. So while B is greater than A, B is 10, A is nine, this is true. So now we go down here, we print this little asterisk symbol and we put a little space. And then we take one from B. We scroll around, B is nine, A is nine. So now we break out of this loop, come out here, A equals A take one, A becomes eight. We come down, both of these get printed, we go around and this continues and continues and continues. And this is how you end up with this nice looking result. So as you can see, this turns what was a complicated script into one that makes elegant sense. And that's it for today's class. Hopefully you feel much better equipped for future skylarking in the Python programming language. And until next time, stay cozy.